Let's talk about one of the fish that got me into the hobby, the swordtail. With their long sword-like tail fins, swordtails have a huge appeal to many in the aquarium hobby. With some simple husbandry, these fish are easy to keep and breed. Wild swordtails hail from North and Central America, from Mexico down to Honduras, where they're found in heavily planted rivers and streams. Some are even found in brackish water. The original swordtail that was brought into the trade was green, very similar to the green swordtail today. Over time, this fish was bred with its cousin, the platy, in order to create the many different strains we come to know and love today. If you go poking around on the internet, you'll find that you can keep a lone swordtail in a 15 to 20 gallon aquarium. But since females grow to six inches, I prefer to keep these fish in a colony with a minimum of a 29 gallon tank, and I really do prefer a 55 or 40 breeder. To keep the females from being harassed, you definitely do want to keep more females to males. While swordtails do have a little bit of a reputation for being aggressive, it is important to keep them with mild-mannered tank mates to make sure they're not timid. I've kept mine with rainbow fish, plecos, mollies, and many other community type fish. Some of the other fish I would recommend are things like tetras, rasboras, cory catfish, and many of the other smaller community type fish. However, I would not keep them with the more aggressive fish or fish that would nip at their fins, such as large cichlids or any other fish that is deemed aggressive. Also to avoid interbreeding, you don't want to keep sword tails of different strains together or different species or keep them with platys since they do share the same genus. We'll get into that a little bit later. When it comes to plants, sword tails are definitely plant safe. You may see them grazing around the rock work, the plants, and anywhere in the aquarium picking at the algae. And occasionally they may pick at the plants, but they're just looking for the algae and not causing any harm. Like the majority of the fish that you'd find at your local fish store, sword tails prefer a temperature between 72 to 80 degrees. As with any other live bear, the higher the temperature, the shorter it will live since you're speeding up its metabolism. From a water standpoint, sword tails prefer hard alkaline water with a pH between seven and eight. I do keep my sword tails closer to an eight pH, which is my local water parameters. But if you do live in an area that has softer water, I would strongly encourage you to add crushed coral or aragonite to your aquarium in order to buffer the pH and hardness. As you get into more specific species of sword tails, or any other aquarium fish for that matter, be sure to research the requirements for that fish because it may vary depending on the species. So now that we've talked about this tank setup, let's go to the fish store and get our fish. So as with any fish, starting with good stock is extremely important. When you head into your local fish store to get your sword tails, make sure you look at the fish to make sure it does not have any white dots, lesions, fungus, or any other sort of damage. As well, check any of the other fish in the sales tanks to make sure that they don't have any distress as well. If you see any fish in that particular sales tank that has that sort of distress, avoid buying any of the fish out of that tank. Once you have your healthy specimens home, quarantined and acclimated, you just need to make sure to keep their water clean and follow good husbandry practices. The good news is the sword tails will take a wide variety of food. One important factor is you do need to get vegetable matter into their diet. I generally like to use a spirulina flake and one of my favorite spirulina flakes is the extreme spirulina flake, which you can buy at the aquarium co-op. One of the great joys of sword tails and many of the other live bearing species is that sword tails give birth to live young, which makes it a lot of fun for the entire family. Telling the male and female sword tail apart is actually quite easy. The male will have the long sword tail like fin on the back of his tail, as well as possess an anal fin called the gonopodium, which he uses to mate with the females. Females will generally be larger, thicker, and more rounded and lack the sword on the tail. From that point, you literally just need to put a group of males and females together and you will surely have fry. So once the female sword tail is pregnant, the gestation period is around 28 days. During this time, you'll notice a black spot that gets larger and larger as the days wear on. And around the 28 day mark, you'll start seeing fry. While sword tails are known to be fry eaters, there are a few things you can do to save the fry. First of all, you can remove the female and put her in either a separate breeding container or into a breeding tank. Due to stress on the female, I really wouldn't recommend this method, but if you are going to do it, make sure you put them into a breeding tank and not into one of those small cramped containers, which don't allow the females a lot of space to move around. What I really like to do actually is to colony breed my sword tails in a heavily planted tank. And this actually serves two purposes. One, the plants will help filter the water. And two, the plants provide great cover for the fry. Some of my favorite plants to use 
are Pogostemon stellatus octopus, guppy grass, and water sprite. Also, you need to keep in mind is if you're running a canister filter or hang on the back filter, you do need to cover that intake with an intake sponge. I prefer the Aquarium Co-op brand, and I've always had good luck with it. The baby fish can take quite a variety of small foods at birth, from crushed up flake food, baby brine shrimp, cyclops, and the Aquarium Co-op fry food, which is one of my favorites. A generation of swordtails reproduces itself in about eight months or so, with males developing the swords at about three to four months. As is true with a lot of things with live bears, this is very temperature dependent. The higher the temperature, the faster they'll grow, but at the same time, the higher temperature shortens their lifespans. Any good breeder would remove any fish that has a bent back or other undesirable traits. This is important to keep the best fish for future generations. Since we're talking about breeding, I do want to answer one question. Will my swordtail breed with my guppy? As we have talked about in the beginning, swordtails and platys were crossed to create the strains we have today. However, swordtails and guppies will not interbreed. Generally, a good starting point is to look at the genus names. So for example, the swordtail is Xiphophorus heleri, while the platy is Xiphophorus maculatus. Since they're both in the genus Xiphophorus, they would be likely to interbreed. So now let's take this a step further with the guppy. Like we said, the swordtail is the Xiphophorus heleri, while the guppy is the Postilia reticulata. Therefore, it would not be able to breed. I do want to caution you, there's always exceptions to this rule, so you do want to research your species thoroughly to make sure you're not creating unwanted hybrids. I do wish you the best of luck with your new sword tails. If you're interested in learning more about the fish tank barn, check out a couple of videos that come here at the end. So that being said, stay safe out there, stay fishy, and I'll catch you on the next video.